Hi guys, check out my little doggy. They grow up so fast. Okay, so how did all this come about? I'll just put down old Dougie because he's a bit heavy right now. So what happened was, sorry about my voice, I'm still getting over my laryngitis, but what are you gonna do? I'm super tough, so I'm gonna make a video anyway. Small Rig, the company, they reached out to me and they said, hey Mark, you seem to be a bit of a ZVE10 expert. And I said, I'm listening. And they said, well, would you like to show your audience a cage that we have built specifically for the ZVE10? And I said, a cage? We're gonna stop there? No, sir, we are not. We're gonna build out a whole rig for my audience. Something where we can show Doug little ZVE-10 being in the studio like a professional camera. And I figured that they wouldn't call me back, but they did. They said, that's a great idea. So they said, just go to the website and, uh, you know, pick out the stuff you want to pick out for the rig and, uh, you know, let us know how it goes, which was pretty cool of them. But then I started thinking to myself, all right, who buys a ZVE-10? People like me, cheapskates, people who don't want to spend a lot of money on anything. So when it came to buying the specific things for the ZVE-10, I stayed away from what I think are the more expensive things. What is the point of buying a $700 camera with a, a nice Sigma 16 mil, which is like a $400 lens? Like the whole reason you're getting the ZVE-10 is value. It's bang for the buck. So when it came to the rig, I thought, let's do the same thing. Let's find a way to make this rig as cheap as possible so people still are blown away by what you got there in your hand, but it doesn't cost you very much money, but they don't know that, right? And of course it has to be functional. I wanted a monitor so I could really see what I was doing, especially if I'm manual focusing. I wanted an external battery so that I could just keep the ZVE-10 running as long as I had a memory card. I wanted a cage where I could access the battery and the memory card in case I needed it. And I wanted a matte box to keep away the flares and the glares and also to look super badass because it really does. And I also want a place to put my little wireless microphone lav setup right there. So toward the end of the video, I will list on the screen all of the parts I used and how much they cost so you can see the full cost of this setup. But the reason I did it this way is that uh, I actually was filming a documentary comedy doc at the comedy club the other day and I had my a7 III and a Tamron 28 to 75. That, that lens is $1,000, that's what it cost me when I bought it, and the a7 III was $2,000 when I bought it. So that's $3,000 American, and he was saying, it's great that you can get such good images out of a cheap little setup like that. And I was like, cheap, what? It's, it's, it's super expensive. And he had no idea how much, when I told him it was $3,000, he was very surprised because I had to let him know how much money I spent to make this stupid documentary with his dumb face in it. Anyway, he was uh, blown away, but I get it. It's a small little mirrorless setup, and that's one of the beauties of the mirrorless camera world is that you can get excellent quality with tiny little cameras. But when I bring this thing into the comedy club, I swear to God, everybody turns their head and they're like, whoa, what are you bringing in? Look at Bennett, he's bringing in the whole film crew. People were extremely impressed when I showed up with this thing and this costs a fraction of that A7 III 28 to 75 setup. It's more functional and way, way cheaper. And honestly, it makes a difference when people talk about clients, but whenever you're shooting things for people and they're paying you money, when you bring in a rig that looks like this, it's kind of like they're like, yeah, I'll give that guy some money. But when you bring in a little mirrorless camera and you're just holding it up to your eye, then people are like, really? What am I What am I paying this guy for? I'm telling you, it makes a difference. So let's start right here. This is the Sony NPF battery and it just goes into this ZG Cine. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, Pergear actually sent me this over and uh, they are going to sponsor a giveaway. So I'm gonna have two of these things to give away to lucky viewers of my channel on an upcoming video, but this is super handy. You just, you can plug a Sony NPF battery in there. I like the big ones because they can power things for hours and hours. Now I will have a link to the Sony NPF batteries. So two of these big ones will cost you about $66 American, and that's a decent deal for the amount of power that you get out of them. And I will stick one of them on a monitor and one of them on this, and you can power 
basically all day. You'll be going all day. So this thing has uh, a great little, it's got a D-tap out here, and it also has a USB-C and a regular USB port right here if you want to power things that way. You want to you charge your iPhone while you're at it, while you're while you're running the little Dougie. It is, this thing is, uh, is not very expensive. It's like $30 and it's been really, really useful. I have that mounted on just a little cold shoe that I got and, uh, and one of these little threads here, just a cold shoe mount here and a cold shoe attachment here on a little rail that goes on these rods. It's basically like Lego for adults. It's not that complicated. If you want to, uh, you know, make this different than I made it, you go right ahead. It's just I will tell you the essential pieces that you will need in order to rig something up. Now up top here, I have my Ninja 5 monitor. Now the Ninja 5 is really good if you want redundant recording. Like, let's say, you know, the ZV-E10 only has one card slot. It's one of the drawbacks of having a more inexpensive camera. It has the one card slot. So if you are at a function where you cannot lose that footage, say you're, you're doing some lady's wedding and she wants her stupid face not to be corrupt on a uh, SD card, you may want a backup. And in that case, I would say record simultaneously to the Ninja and to the ZV-E10. So spring for the extra money. This thing costs you about $500, I think. Sometimes you can get them on sale, especially this week is like Black Friday week. So who knows what you might get. And, and it works extremely well. Of course, it's highly recommended by me and everybody, but I, in the description, I am giving a much, much cheaper monitor. And that cheaper monitor comes with a bunch of accessories like the uh, HDMI cord that goes from HDMI to micro HDMI that fits Doug and will also have a little ball head so you don't have to buy the one I bought which is uh, I got this one from small rig and it's like 30 bucks it's a bit more expensive but it's robust it's very nice I'll put a link to it in case you want a nice replacement for a ball head but anyway that's just what I got but I would say you do the uh, the one I'm gonna recommend right now I think is the newer right now it's on sale today for $76 so it may go on sale every now and again normal price I think is only $110 and it has uh, a uh, hood shade that comes with it which is great in the sunshine and it also has uh, the USB I mean the HDMI cord and it has the ball head and a bunch of other little things with it, which is such a great deal. And since the handle that I will be recommending has cold shoe mounts on it, you can just stick that monitor right to the handle and you're good to go. And this handle is actually, this handle I got is not the right handle. It doesn't really fit this uh, cage very well. So I'm gonna have to send this back and get the right handle. So I will link a correct handle for you guys in the description. And on the handle, I put the uh, the monitor on top. And if I can just get this out with my fingers, because I'm like the Incredible Hulk. I don't need an Allen key. I got it. I got it. Oh, man. Oh, I need an Allen key. No, I got it. Okay, so, and on the front there, it, there's my wireless microphone from Hollyland. I didn't include that in the build because that's not really part of it. It's just uh, if you want to hook in, you know, an external microphone, lavalier, I like to stick it because the, the, the handles will usually come with a couple of cold shoes on them and then you stick that there. And now you can see the rails and the base plate. Now here is the matte box, which is the next thing that we will talk about. This max, matte box is, is fantastic. So matte boxes, you, you want them generally to avoid flares and glares from light. And, uh, and then it has this shade here that can, uh, it's like, you know, when you're in a car and the windshield that, you know, the sun is coming in and you put down the visor, it's kind of like that for your camera, but you can also add in filters. You can just slide a filter into this thing here, some kind of ND filter or polarizer, something like that. Uh, you buy those separately, but then you have the ability to add in those filters. So this just, it slides on, it comes with these attachments that attach to your lens, and then it just slides on and hangs off your lens and it's super light, so it's not going to be a problem for your lens. And uh, you slide this off here. Huh? Here you go, and then, oh, starting to look like Doug again. You see him? Oh, look at him. He's so cute. Now, this thing is not completely necessary. You don't 
have to have this matte box, but it does help prevent glare and flares going into your camera, which is great. And you can add the filters, but of course you could just get a variable ND filter or something like that if you wanna do filters and stick them on your lens, but it doesn't have that super impressive look. And for me, the matte box functionality and the look that it gives my camera is worth $80 to me. So now I'll take the rails off. These are just standard camera rails right here and they just slide out of the little holes. And there you go. I just got the 12 inch there because that's all I needed to get all of the stuff on that I wanted to get on. Look, this is cool. See this? I just took this off a magnet here. It comes with a little, uh, little key to help you unscrew the the base plate and then it just sticks right back on through with a magnet it's super super convenient very clever small rig very clever and so that's the base plate right there and now let me show you the cage it fits the zve 10 really really nicely it has this lovely black grip it feels so nice and now the the camera doesn't feel small at all in your hands this is uh, great i've seen a few people with the cage already on youtube and uh, they're right when they say it makes the camera so much easier to hold. It's substantial now. Your pinky finger doesn't slip off. It's uh, it's really, really great. I'm impressed with that. All right, so let me take this off entirely so you can see what the cage looks like. And there he is right there, the little cage, it's about 50 bucks. So I just reassembled so I could show you here. One of the things I wanted was the ability to be able to use the flip screen. So I made sure there was enough space in between the battery pack and the camera so that I could do this. That's one of the reasons I designed it the way I did with the rails because I wanna be able to flip the screen out if I wanna. So I'll put the real math on the screen here, but I got about $440 in my calculations when it comes to rigging it out the cheapest way that you can. And if you factor in that uh, the ZV-E10 and the Sony 16 mil F1.4, is, which is what I would use when I'm doing a rig for when I'm trying to film things, then uh, you're talking about roughly $1,500 for one hell of a setup. It is That is cheaper than my A7 III body itself. Far more functional, will last all day, looks super impressive. It's got that amazing eye autofocus. I didn't get the, the focus pulling thing because for the most part, I trust the autofocus. I trust the autofocus entirely, in fact, for the ZV-E10. And if you want to say, a, you're tracking, tracking a bride coming down because her wedding's all about her, you just, you just poke on her and you track it, not the real person, on the screen, and then you, it'll follow her all the way up the aisle. There aren't many occasions where I'm gonna use manual focus with the ZV-E10, but you always have that option. You can just do it on the lens itself because the focus pulling will add a little extra cost to it. Now, if you're gonna be doing that a lot, if you're always gonna go manual focus, then I would get the focus pulling set, but for me, I'm not gonna use it that often, so I didn't do it. There you go, thanks to Small Rig for reaching out. I gotta go because my voice is killing me. I just wanted to show you this cool little setup for not that much money you can get Doug looking like a million bucks. Anyway, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. Need more medicine? Ah, uh, that's better on the throat, huh?